The 2018 Spider-Man game is one that still now in 2023, people are still talking about and replaying. It was fun, incredibly special, and a lot of people really loved it. So what really made it a big deal? Well, I'm Jake Baldino, and today we're gonna talk about that. So starting by turning the clock back a little bit, I can still vividly remember when the game was revealed at E3 2016. That summer, this trailer was like the thing. It wasn't super long, but it highlighted like a realistic, cinematic Spider-Man game by Insomniac Studios, a development studio that a lot of people really loved. And with PlayStation first party power behind it, expectations were pretty quickly through the roof. Obviously we know where things went, but it's still worth mentioning that there was a long, long lineage of Spider-Man games to come before this, and hardcore Spider-Man fans such as myself stuck with them all through and through and played through them all. There were some ups, there were some really, really deep downs, but a lot of Spider-Man games were already special, already encapsulated the character in great ways, had some great swinging, understood the combat, but when 2018 Spider-Man finally released, it seemed to be the perfect combo. It had figured out the combat, made it really compelling. It had a great New York City. It told an incredible story. And of course, it had some pretty good web swinging. Was it a perfect game if like you're being serious game reviewer critic person? No, maybe not really. A lot of the open world stuff amounted to busy work and some of the sections where you didn't play as Spider-Man were pretty dull. Can't let him see me. But they really had a good thing going here with the way encounters worked. You'd land on an area, you'd see goons, you'd be able to take them out one by one as a sneaky Spidey. But then when the combat kicked off, you had so many tools at your disposal from classic Spider-Man web gadgets to being able to use objects in the environment to your advantage to just some really cool kind of Arkham style button comboing, dodging, parrying type stuff with some incredible over the top finishers that really just kind of felt like they were ripped from a comic book page. Like they understand Spider-Man's movement here. And the ability to seamlessly go from like a combat scenario to jumping and swinging around really worked. And when you're just out in that city, the swinging can be thrilling. Is it a super one-to-one -one physics simulation with Spider-Man being an actual pendulum on a rope? No, but webs need to attach to buildings. The sense of momentum and speed is really well done. And you can do some flips and tricks in the air. Control, engage in active pursuit of a fugitive vehicle. As you upgrade your suit, as you get further through the game, it gets much stronger and you really feel like you can rock it through New York City very quickly. And speaking of New York City, I mean, damn, they did a really good job here. The street level stuff actually feels dense. It's filled with shops, some interiors, lots of cars, lots of pedestrians that especially got an upgrade on the PlayStation 5 version. Please don't ask me to do the hand thing. Always on the job, huh, Spider-Man? That's right, it's me. But when you're swinging around, different areas feel distinct. Neighborhoods have their own vibe and feel to it. Just like in real life, you know, you just go a couple of blocks and part of New York can completely change. And they really nailed the feel of Manhattan here. Plus, I think it really helps that they didn't stick to like a full day and night cycle where the game will go completely from day to night. They picked specific scenes and specific times of day to really snapshot Manhattan at a really beautiful angle, whether it's sunsets, light rain, foggy, just a dark night. They were really able to highlight a lot of the beauty and why we love it in real life. And in this city, a lot of the thrill, the excitement comes from just some good big action set pieces and direction. A lot of sequences in the game, encounters with over the top cool bosses ripped from your favorite comic book pages or the old cartoon are done out in the city, swinging around, hot pursuits. Gotcha. Now let's talk. I said I'm done talking. And it made it feel like big moments in this game could happen anywhere, on any street, on top of any building, or inside. That really helped for the pacing. Obviously, you had to do some open world stuff here and there, but anytime you jump back to that main story, you knew some cool shit was gonna happen that you didn't see already. <laughs> and 
And that did a really good job keeping the gameplay interesting, but the other half of it all, of course, is the story. I think, that this might be a hot take, but I think this is one of the better Spider-Man stories told in modern storytelling mediums. I mean, we've had a lot of great stuff, obviously some good Spider-Man movies lately, but just a classic Peter Parker story, I think Insomniac really understands Spider-Man here. His juggle with his identity, his responsibilities, but also the people around him who build him up. And I'm not just talking about like Aunt May, Mary Jane, Miles building him up, but also some of his greatest villains building him up, helping shape who Peter Parker truly is. The tagline for this game in the marketing and stuff was be greater, and it really actually made sense. It wasn't just some marketing BS tagline. It felt like a through line for this story. This was a community Spider-Man, a New York Spider-Man, a Spider-Man in his prime, but one who still faced real Peter Parker problems. That's always been the drama of Spider-Man. Peter Parker has hardships. Spider-Man brings difficult things into his life, and they nailed how that really feels here. You know Oscorp would hire you in a heartbeat, right? One phone call to hair. Sure, but Dr. Octavius's work will help millions. I'm, I'm right where I want to be, right where I should be. Almost sounds like it's more important than your other job. Everybody thinks of Spider-Man as this lighthearted, goofy, fun, web thwipping guy. Yeah, but he's got young teenager, 20 something year old problems, but with a dash of superhero in it. And they really did it well here. Not to mention the fact, and we're going into spoilers now, but they made a bold decision in this game to kill Aunt May. That's big, man. I know we've seen Aunt May die more now uh, with the most recent Spider-Man No Way Home, but Insomniac Spider-Man, this was the way to really do it. This scene was incredibly emotional and impactful and really felt truly, truly earned. And a lot of that, of course, comes down to the performances and first and foremost, Yuri Lowenthal. Yuri goddamn Lowenthal is my Spider-Man. He is the voice of Spider-Man. He is Peter Parker. It is absolutely perfect. He nails the ups and downs of Peter, the warmth, the heroicism. Come on, Miles, answer. Don't make me worry about you and me. And of course, the goofier, lighthearted side. Herman, long time no see. Hey, I'm no lawyer, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's a parole violation. It is a well-rounded, good Spider-Man that thankfully for me, I just can't get enough of. Sure, I know like they changed this Peter Parker's face. There was like a whole thing behind the scenes with that, yada yada. They kind of made him look younger. Regardless, it's Yuri Lowenthal's performance that still seals the deal no matter what. We're also suckers for good music, right? All of us, we love a good movie score, a superhero theme, and John Paisano's work, the composer here, is incredible. This Spider-Man theme is up there with superhero themes, in my opinion. In this day and age when every superhero has a movie, a memorable theme is key. And this one is right up there with James Horner, Amazing Spider-Man, Michael Giacchino with the newer MCU Spider-Man movies, and of course, Danny Elfman's Sam Raimi Spider-Man score. This is just as memorable, just as hummable, just as heroic, and serves as an excellent through line, you know, like a motif through the entire game. <laughs> It really encapsulates that heroic feeling, the adventurous, exciting nature of Spider-Man and the otherworldly stuff he really does. The absolutely unbelievable, larger than life concept that is Spider-Man swinging through the air, being a hero. It is something to be romanticized. It is something to be celebrated. And composers have unlocked this in a lot of great ways, but I, I think John Paisano's is special. So the 2018 game was absolutely great, but it's all the other stuff they did with it too. Support, in my opinion, is the whole other half. A single player game, a complete single player game can be released and be fantastic, but when they add to the experience in meaningful ways and in most importantly, consumer friendly ways, things can be even better. The game was pretty quickly followed up with some story based DLC, the city that never sleeps, kind of following up on Hammerhead and Black Cat and having a whole Spider-Man Black Cat type of thing. And it was all right, but it, it still was just a little bit more story to experience, a little bit more gameplay and just another excuse or reason to stay within that world. It didn't reach the heights of the main story campaign, of course, but a little extra taste 
is always nice. More things to fight, more things to do. But it was all the other stuff too. It was like the suits added. There were a bunch of Spider-Man suits added. Obviously the game is so much fun with the amount of suits that you had to really play as a Spider-Man that you wanna be. They did a great job designing the new Spidey suits, but it was all the other ones that paid homage to various different interpretations of Spider-Man throughout the many, many years that made it that much more special. And the fact that they added more over time based on different movies and stuff like that, just just made it that much sweeter. It made people keep going back to the game. This is a game where you fire it up to go for a swing for 20 minutes. And when they add a new suit, it was fun to open up the game, equip a new suit and go for a swing and live that Spider-Man feeling, that sensation, that experience for just a couple more minutes. Not to mention the fact that the game also had a great photo mode that really just kind of kept the conversation, kept the excitement around Spider-Man alive. Shout out to the photo community for still to this day producing some incredible images of Spider-Man in New York with this photo mode tools provided by Insomniac. It's something else. Then with the release of the PlayStation 5, the game was followed up with a PlayStation 5 version. Things were improved, the visuals were overhauled, and it made a hell of a difference. And then of course with the PC version, you have the same thing. Thing. even crazier graphics, even more fun to be had in the game world, and thankfully, some incredible modders. The PC modding community, when they love something and they're talented, the sky is the limit. And with Spider-Man, they did a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> Whether it was on PC, PlayStation 4, PS5, this Insomniac Spider-Man game just laid a good, solid foundation for a baseline, incredible Spider-Man game. From here, the sky is the limit. We already have a great Spider-Man, a great New York, great supporting characters, great gameplay structure. So while again, there's little things you complain about here and there, ultimately, this is the standard for future Spider-Man games. And we've already been followed up with a Miles Morales game that we'll probably spend a whole other separate video talking about. But for now, that's what made Spider-Man a big deal to us and to a lot of the community. And you know, sometimes we just wanna gush about games. We take the before you buy videos where we break down the goods, the bads, the pros and cons and stuff like that. And there are things in the gaming world, in the gaming industry that we need to complain about and talk about, but sometimes we can just sit back and love a game. And that's what we did today with Spider-Man. So let us know your favorite memory of Spider-Man uh, when you first played it what your thoughts are about the story, Yuri Lowenthal's Peter Parker, some of the decisions, some of the changes they make in this story. Let's talk about anything Spider-Man from 2018 down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like this video, us just talking about stuff we love and talking games with you guys every single day, all you gotta do is click the like button. It definitely helps us out, but that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Godspeed, Spider-Man.